viewer discretion advised. How does a 10 year old sand miner from Africa become the scariest man on the planet? Pendant la grossesse, il était toujours agité dans le ventre, si bien que je ne parvenais même pas à dormir. Mais pour bagarrer, non. Il ne bagarrait jamais. My dad didn't have a good reputation. Was your dad a fighter? Not like a professional fighter, but he was violent, fighting, beating my mom up, beating us up, and that's even how they get divorced. I was able to see the fear in the eye of my mom. One of my goals was to take that fear out of her. Then we started to live in different family. I never fear uh, as I belong to some family anymore. And from that moment, I knew something. I don't want to become like my dad. I always feel like I miss my childhood. Like I was subject of shame to mm. other kids. I gonna go to school and didn't have a pen to take note or a notebook to write on it. Sometimes uh, no shoes or clothes. And you couldn't tell them we can't afford it. You didn't want to say it. They knew, they but. Knew. What can they do? Francis gets kicked out of school because he can't afford the supplies. From the age of only 10 years old, he starts working in a sand mine. One of the things that I read about you was that you worked in a sand mine when you were young. I was about 10 years old when I started that because... When Francis was in the career, it's when he came to the house that we could pay something in this open cast mine, hundreds of artisanal miners are working in waters soiled by mercury without any protection. Among them, dozens of children, including girls, sometimes younger than five. Even though he, that work was meant for adults, but we didn't have any options, so we take what we have. Growing up doing something like that, first of all, it had to be very difficult. Like very digging difficult. sand. Yeah. It's also your body must develop very strong from doing something like that. <sighs> At 10 years old, like as you're growing, as you're maturing, doing something that's that difficult, yeah. I mean, it must have made you really fucking strong. And although he does his best to support his mother, Francis is secretly hoping that a savior is gonna come and rescue him. I was always expecting somebody to come there and do something. I grew up with this expectation for many, many years, but it was clear that nobody, nobody is coming for me anymore. But something else happened instead, when somebody showed him a YouTube clip of Mike Tyson. That was like my motivation to watch Mike Tyson on uh, YouTube because that's when I, I never watched your fight really? life because I grew up in Africa and I didn't have a damn TV, nothing like that, you know. And I was watching it, I'm like, damn, I can do this. No, you did what you don't know what you did. Know what you did? You, um, your words were your destiny. You spoke out your reality. And you said, I'm going to do that. That's what happened to me. I was locked up in a juvenile detention center and I was like, what? 12 or 11, I was locked up in a juvenile detention. And I'd be watching the movie The Greatest, and it was cool. And as soon as the lights came on, Muhammad Ali came in. And as soon as he came in, everybody lost. I mean, the staff, the, pol the guards, the police, everybody lost. And I was, I said, I want to be like him. First thing I said, I want to be like him. I, I yes. didn't know I was going to do it, but I said, I want to be like him. The personality of a person, the ways of a person, the thoughts, the deeds, the actions, it's all based around his heart. For what is a man? A man is his heart. I was a dream. I was very ambitious. People around thought I was going crazy. Like, what the hell? You are not for that class of life. You have to be like a farmer, like your dad, and you can't do it. I'm like, why? Why I can't do it? Who says he can't change? Regardless to man's title, regardless to man's wealth, rank or position, if the heart is not great, then he cannot be great. What the fuck is that? Who told you it's possible for you? Look at you. Look at where you came from. But if the heart is great, that man remains great under all circumstances, rich or poor, large or small, so does the heart that makes one large or small. I just have to change the situation. I just have to be something else. I believe that I can make my own destiny. 
I told you, I'm the real champion. I told you, I'm the champion of the world. That I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. All of you bow. All of our critics bow. All of you suckers. All of you suckers bow. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's never been anybody ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. From this moment on, to recognize me as the style of boxing. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. All of you chumps are gonna bow when I whip him. I'm gonna show you how great I am. So, why don't I be the guy coming for myself? A miracle uh, won't happen right now. You have to take action. 20 years ago today, my dad passed away after being sick for a very long time. He couldn't afford to go to the hospital. I was looking at my mom and asked myself, if she ever got sick, what would I do? At that point, I knew I had to do something to at least be able to provide her decent health care. Before I left Cameroon, I went to see my mom. She didn't know why I was there for that long, but I was there because that was my last time before I leave. Then I'm like looking at, staring at my mom sometime, like maybe this might be the last time that I'm I'm seeing her, but I have to do this. That's when I decided to leave. But if you're in Cameroon, you just can't go to Europe by taking the front door. You know, so how'd you I get have there? to use all the back doors. <laughs> <laughs> and in the case of Francis, the first step is nothing less than crossing the biggest and most treacherous desert on earth. Sahara is one Sahara of the- Sahara Desert, yeah. The Sahara Desert. And it's like one of the biggest over there. They just bring in a small truck and put your baggage in it. You know, like Toyota Tacoma? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's gonna be like 25 of you guys in the back. It, 25 people in a Toyota Tacoma? Yeah, wow. plus your luggage. So wow. you know, you are not allowed for a lot of luggage. Even water, you don't allowed for s certain quantity of water because it takes space. Oof. And you are going to the desert and you have to grab the truck so hard so you get cramped. Mm. And then, but when you get cramped, you can't let him go because if you let him go, you fall and that's it. They right. won't stop. Let him go is like letting your life go. Oh, you know, wow. it's over if I let him go. There is no second chance. I remember there was a girl with a baby. She couldn't do it anymore. She just want to throw a baby away. Oh my like God. this how hard it was. Like she couldn't do it and you can't blame her. The guy just keep holding the baby to take the baby from her. Like. You can hear the agonizing wails of another woman and go to speak to her. I heard you crying. I want to see my baby. Her name is Olabisi. Two of her four children, it seems, were on another truck. They are the older ones, ages just nine and 11. I don't know this is my kid. <laughs> I put her to death, yeah. And they have to hide from uh, like gay riders because sometimes they are like um, helicopter flying up there, looking, checking if there are something going on because they know that there is a lot of traffic, there, not right. only. Uh, immigrant, but only like guns and drugs and everything, so they're always uh, flying there. You have to be lucky so the, ga the car don't break up in the middle of the trip, because if the car break up in the middle of the trip, most of the time it's over. What happens then? Well, guess what? Yeah. You guys might just die. The migrants have been stranded here for three days after their truck broke down. There are about 30 in all left to die. Uh, at the daytime, it's like 150 degrees. <sighs> Nighttime, he drops to like maybe 20 degrees. It's crazy. You're gonna cross a mafia and all those people across the road. You're gonna get robbed, every kind of shit. So you better don't have all your money on you mm. if you don't get killed off, if you don't kill yourself right. by taking some risk. One of the women starts praying under her breath. Jesus. A single sentence over and over. Even before the middle of the trip, the water is finished. Nobody has water anymore. Oof. And these people, they don't give a shit. They just want to drive from this point to this point. So you get dehydrated at the point that you're not sweating anymore. 
is a like oil on your face. Mm. At some point, we have like a dump of sand. So you have to wipe your face and everything because the sand is just like, oh, you go through all this stuff. And we found a water well and it was so dirty with death animal in the bird, everything. If I don't drink this water, I'm not lasting long. So you drink it. <laughs> so you drink it. You kind of like take the water, put it in the bottle, leave your shirt and make it use your filter. shirt as a filter mm -hmm. drink the water that's where you kind of like start to understand what you put your stuff yourself into it's just the beginning yeah so here's the good news i didn't know that but there's actually two spanish territories in morocco that means you don't actually need to cross to spain to get to spain you just need to get inside those cities and to do so you actually need to climb the fence that surrounds the cities or to swim from shore to shore but that's easier said than done. Sometimes we live in the forest, yeah. uh, hiding for the cops, trying to cross the border to go to Spain. Before and in between attempts to cross over, migrants were groups in the forest surrounding those cities, where they face an entirely different kind of reality. Get cold all the time, no clothes, no food. The cops raid the forest on a weekly basis. They steal your money, vandalize your stuff, and are physically abusive to men and women. But when, when they take your money, they don't care about all those they just want to take whatever they can take so you had to swallow your money yeah you swallow your money and then find it later find it later you had to right i get like it. at yeah. this point it's a matter of surviving and it was did you have food no sometimes we eat sometimes we have to go find food in the trash you know sometimes arguing with rat in the trash like hey get a, get away of these tomatoes it's oh, mine. Man. This rotted tomatoes is mine, not yours. You know, <laughs> go back in the forest, figure out how to cook that in the aluminium bucket or something. <sighs> the first way to get to the city is by climbing over the 11 miles fence that surrounds it. But calling it a fence is an oversimplification. It's a series of fences. The first one is 20 foot high. The second one has a flexible top, leading you straight into the barbed wire netting sitting at the bottom of it. The third fence is the highest yet, with more barbed wire waiting for you along with the civil guard, standing before a 2 by 4 meters ditch leading to a double fence topped with more barbed wires. So let me ask you, what would you go for? Fence or water? Francis chose the fence. About 11 miles of fence will protect the island. It's small. I went to the fan, look at the fan like this. Man, the back wire was just on it like this. There's my life in behind them, my future. Right. Man, I'm taking my chance. The first time I get caught, very caught, I was bleeding all over my hands, my feet, because I fell into it. I can't stay there. If those guys caught me there, they're probably gonna kill me. How long were you in Morocco for? One year. One year? Yeah. Holy shit. Because every time that you attend, if you fail, they're going to bring you back in the south, in the desert, and throw you guys there. Disorientated and dehydrated, these migrants have just been deported. The nearest village is a 15-kilometer walk in the Sahara Desert, and they have no food or water. So when you fail, you got to go through the same cycle over and over again. And sometimes, instead of like thinking of going back to the fence, you're like, okay, let me go try in the water. 
This young man's dream of a better life in Europe ended before it began. His body washed up on the shores of Ceuta, a Spanish enclave on Morocco's Mediterranean coast. You guys have to collect money to buy a boat yeah. uh -huh. to ram. Just a small one, the one that they use in the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. I count the wave like one, two, three, just most of the time it's like three waves. And the third one will be the biggest one. The first one came, it was still okay. Second one, as much as we're going in the water, it get deeper and deeper. Then the third wave came, that was like uh, something that you see in the movie. No, just and smashed you. We fell in the water, no paddle. I hold my boat, I'm like, I trust my myself, I trust my boat. This is my life, I'm not letting this go. I'm right. dying with it. I hold it like this, I saw this thing came. I'm like, put my head in the water, hold my boat like this, and it came through like, boom, on top of me, I scream like, what the hell is this? When we get in the boat, we find out that there are two of us missing, basically those with the paddle. How do we gonna paddle? without paddle. Right. The guy was like, listen, we're gonna paddle with our hands. I'm like, okay, this guy might be stupid or something. Like people get, people die in the war, in the ocean paddling with the real paddle. And we are just gonna paddle with our hands. How crazy is that? Man, for real? I'm gonna die here. Just, just like this, my family don't even know. They won't even see my body, man. When you got on that Red Cross boat and you knew, I realized he was a third and I left Cameroon a third one year ago. Wow. One year anniversary. One long journey. 2013, seven years ago, we were freed by the Spanish Homeland Security after spending two months in jail for illegally entering on European soil by sea. I had nothing by then but a dream and a faith of pursuing it. Okay, that was intense. Let's take a little breather here before we finally move to the fun stuff. If you like my documentaries, you can now support me through Patreon and get credited as a producer on everything I do. Check out the link in the description if you want to join my team and make some amazing films. Let's keep going. After considering going to England and Germany, Francis finally settles on France. I just wanted a place with opportunity. France seems to have that opportunity. The very next day he arrives, Francis steps into a boxing gym. I told him like, listen man, I just came here. I don't have money, I don't have nothing. But the only thing that I want is some place to keep training because I, I'm gonna become a world champion. Rapidement, j'ai compris qu'il y avait he finds a parking lot to sleep in and fully commits to training. I was very happy at that time because uh, even though I was sleeping in the parking lot, I was somewhere that I would have my fair share if I work hard. And it doesn't take long before it's pushed into MMA instead of boxing. So if you need the faster income to help you get out in your situation, you have to do MMA. Then I'm like, what's MMA? Like, what is Jiu Jitsu? That explained everything. I'm like, hey man, please. 
Leave me alone with your enemy. <rire> je ne me souviens pas d'avoir rencontré un mec aussi fort de manière oui. Ah oui, oh, oh, God damn it. your first pro fight it was four months after um, you started i started wow so i won my first fight submission like you won by submission? Yeah. What did you like, use? I don't know. <laughs> There's not a name for that. Like. Hold your breath. We're not turning back. Only one man remains and stands between Francis and his dream. The greatest heavyweight of all time. When you went into the Stipe fight, the first Stipe fight, how did you expect the fight to end? What, would, what did you think was going to happen? I don't know. You didn't know? Yeah. All the way through that fight, nothing was right. Even all the way how, in training? Yeah. Even, even how, how I approached the fight. In 2018, after I lost against Tipe, man, I went back. I felt like I felt like shit. Couldn't sleep. Even when I go to, I went to sleep. I didn't want the uh, sun to rise the next day. I felt like I want the the day, the night just last forever, you know. 
couldn't look at myself feel very bad at that moment i just took my phone and then went online book a first plane for cameroon i guess and guess what when i went in cameroon the welcome that i had there man like it was crazy they were so ex- excited so happy so proud I love that. and at some point i was still like feeling bad about myself <laughs> yeah i'm like there was just like hey champ welcome and everybody was going crazy even gra- grammars who wow. doesn't know anything about fighting and now i'm like listen guy uh i think you might get get something wrong here mm-hmm. i lost i didn't win that fight i'm like we don't care you you want everything like francis for new c'est une légende c'est un monument donc tout ce qu'il fait en europe en aux états unis c'est gravé dans mon mémoire we never had somebody there we never even expect somebody from us we we'll get there and you make it there you represent us we make our prize obviously it didn't go your way but you see you're still young and this il a grandi ici et je suis là présentement je vais toujours la cueillir ici when I go back home, that's the place that allowed me to understand like how far uh, I came, you know. Do you think it's your destiny? Do you think it's your your birthright, your destiny to My be? Friend, you have to make your destiny. Stand out of your childhood in West Africa. The memory for my child in Africa, it wasn't the best, but I couldn't make it here today if it wasn't like that. The future doesn't make sense without the past. For what is a man? A man is his heart. Well,